Stoker is director Park Chan Wook's first English language feature film. Now, he's the guy who brought us the Vengeance trilogy, which consisted of Sympathy for Mr. Vengeance, Old Boy, and Lady Vengeance. Also, films like um, I'm a Cyborg, but that's okay, and uh, JSA Joint Security Area. But as I say, this is his first English language film, and a film that um, it seems to have divided audiences quite significantly, right down the middle. People can't decide whether or not they like or, or dislike this movie. Um, the the plot follows a uh, uh, two people, um, a mother played by Nicole Kidman and her daughter India played by Mia um, Vazikovska. I've probably just butchered that surname, um, but um, they basically play mother and daughter respectively, whose uh, father and uh, or husband and father has died in a recent car accident. At the funeral, they meet his estranged brother played by the always charismatic Matthew Good who subsequently moves in with them, and um, after moving in, things between the family take a turn for the dark and sinister. Now, this is a film that, the, the less you know about the plot going in, the more you're going to get from it. Um, it's very much a film that I think was marketed almost as a horror film. Uh, even looking at this cover here, I didn't know anything about this going in. And uh, to me, it looked like a vampire movie. It's not. I will say that now. Um, it's not a spoiler because that's something it isn't. But it's not a vampire movie. You will not find anybody sucking on anybody's neck in this movie, um, despite it being called Stoker. It was apparently named after uh, Bram Stoker, the author of Dracula, which is one of the favourite books of the writer of this film, Wentworth Miller. Yes, that's right. The guy from Prison Break uh, wrote this movie, which was apparently on the um, is it the, the blacklist of best unproduced uh, screenplays uh, and eventually got picked up and adapted by Park Chan-wook. Now, what I want to say about this movie is it, it, it's definitely one of the best, if not the best movie I've seen in 2013 or, or a film from 2013. Um, the reason being is it's it's very different to what you would normally see. Um, the, the plot itself is inherently mysterious. It's it's very much a mystery, and it's very much, in terms of both style and narrative to a certain extent, um, tailored and um, referencing Alfred Hitchcock movies. There's a, a, a lot of Hitchcock in there, um, some references more over than others, and Hitchcock being one of my favourite all-time filmmakers, I got a real kick out of, of seeing that. Um, in the same way that Pedro Almodovar's film The Skin I Live In was a reference to Vertigo, um, this film Film is is full of Hitchcock references, which I really enjoyed. Uh, the, the 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 film really hinges on the performances of the three main characters. Now, all three actors in this are great. Nicole Kidman's probably given the least to do up until the very sort of final act of the movie, when her character goes from being the stereotypical, um, almost two-dimensional, cold um, mother character who becomes infatuated with her late husband's estranged brother almost immediately. You know, it's a very sort of two-dimensional character until um, the last act when you get to see a glimpse behind uh, the curtain of her psyche almost. Um, India, the, the uh, girl who plays India, um, is absolutely fantastic and, and this film along with Alice in Wonderland, which to be honest, Alice in Wonderland was a bad film but uh, she was good in it. Um, her performance in this is, is quite frankly brilliant. I mean I, I would be sorely disappointed if she doesn't receive nominations for, um, it would probably be Best Supporting Actress but to be honest she's very much the main character in this movie so best actress I think she definitely deserves um, a nomination for, for best actress for this movie she brings so much to it in a role that is over the course of the movie uh, wrong foot in the audience you know her character starts out as a sort of um a, a sullen Wednesday Adams type character the uh, misfit almost goth girl who is bullied at school and is very quiet and withdrawn and, and doesn't like to be touched by anyone. Um, it's, it goes from that sort of character into something completely different and the actress really does um, just play that role so brilliantly. Um, and that brings me on to, to Matthew Good because her performance is very much coupled with Matthew Good's performance. There are certain revelations about each of the characters that ma makes their characters um, linked in sort of more ways, psychologically than you would think. Um, I'm trying try really hard to avoid spoilers here. Um, but their performances very much 
complement each other and the film is essentially their double act it's the character of India and Uncle Charlie and um, that, that is the, the heart of the film right there um, so the, the performances throughout are absolutely brilliant. Um, a lot of people have criticised this movie for having, you know, sort of long scenes where not much happens, but to be honest, I, I don't have that criticism and I, I don't really see where that criticism comes from because Park Chan Wook is a director who is very detail orientated and a lot of what happens um, <clears throat> in the earlier parts of this movie you know could be down to a, a glance between characters or a seemingly throwaway shot of a pair of shoes but he's going a long way in building tension and fleshing out um, the characters but tries to do so with not an awful lot of exposition, um, which I I thought was really interesting. And at no point, I mean, this film flew by for me. I, I absolutely loved it from beginning to end. Um, so the criticism that you know not a lot happens, it's probably down to personal taste. But I didn't find that to be the case at all. Um, the the film as well is structured um, in a in almost peculiar way. Um, in the third act you have a series, you have several sort of climactic or revel revelatory scenes where you know characters discover things or, or um, backstory is revealed and the, the, there is no one big climax, there, there are several and I, I, you know I think you can read into that, I mean I, I've been reading sort of feminist articles about this movie because it is considered to be a very feminist film and I can totally see why. And, and Anybody who knows me um, will know that I'm very much, I consider myself to be a feminist and I know that that is a word that comes with a certain stigma but when you look at feminist as meaning you know you want equal parts and, and, and roles and just equality between men and women, um, how, ca how can you not want that? Um, but this is very much um, a feminist film in as much as a lot of the imagery in it is very feminine, uh, the, the main character of India is a, a, a very sort of feminist character and a very complex one and a lot of what her character goes through um, is something that you couldn't do with a male in the lead role because her uh, relationship with her uncle Charlie that builds over the course of the film is very much um, juxtaposed against her sexual awakening. I believe she's 18 um, in the film and, and her sexual awakening takes place over the course of the story and you know there's a scene of um, masturbation in the shower which is uh, juxtaposed with um, a, a scene of a, a very different nature and it, it really goes some way into exploring this character in in a very sort of feminine way and I found that to be quite refreshing it's definitely the most sort of feminine movie I saw um, from 2013 and that to me makes it more interesting because it's not something that you see as often um, in sort of big budget movies so I, I really enjoyed that aspect um, the film as well in terms of its themes, you know, it, it does, ha does have themes of uh, loyalty, of a family, it also touches on, um, and uh, you know, I won't go too much into it, but it also touches on um, hereditary mental illness and and um, also you know whether or not you are sort of destined to repeat the, the past and the, the thematically it's a very rich movie and there's a lot in there to be picked apart and enjoyed it's it's a movie that has many layers it's a movie that you will no doubt get a lot more from every time you watch it it's a very rewarding experience it's shot beautifully the the camera movement and you find that this with all of Park Chan Wook's movies the camera movement is always so fluid, it just feels like a very elegant movie. Um, and like I say, that again adds to the almost sort of um, feminist style that, that is throughout the film. So I have to say that I, I really, really loved this movie and it's quite possibly my um, favourite one of, of 2013. Uh, it, it's different, it's not afraid to be different, it also homages, you know, classic movies which, you know, for film fans you'll really enjoy. It features three tremendous performances and um, it's just a, a very rich movie. So I, I would highly recommend Stoker. I'm interested to see what Park Chan-wook does next in terms of his English language features and also what Wentworth Miller goes on to do because this guy, you know, he's in Prison Break, he's in some of the Resident Evil sequels. Who would have known that he had a film like this in him? You you know, this is such a, a great script and, and it's full of so many subtleties and nuances and it's it's a very 
for his first sort of produced screenplay, I believe it's his first produced screenplay, it's just a great achievement. So, Stoker, honestly, I would go in with an open mind. Don't just listen to the negative reviews that there have been on this movie, because this film, in terms of its acting, it, 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 its script, its cinematography, it's just sort of quintessential filmmaking. There's a lot in there to enjoy, so go in with an open mind, and um, I, you know, I would recommend it uh, to anybody. So, Stoker, I absolutely, really, really loved.